last time on Total Party Guild. No, he doesn't look happy. <laughs> <laughs> it was Graham's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately passing the buck. No, 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 no. I, I didn't actually say. Way to that. throw me I under the just... carriage. Welcome, heroes. I'm Jeremy Blackheart, and I'll be DMing this story arc of Total Party Guild, a weekly retro wave inspired modular live play 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons podcast. This week, the guild will be employing Vanessa Otero, playing Jewel Von Onyx, human bard. Uh, Justin Lamb, playing Stenel Bjornsson, the halfling barbarian. And Sean Rowe, playing Singer, the tiefling cleric. So it has been about two weeks since our adventure to Timitone Village. Why don't you fill me in a little bit about what your characters have been doing in that two weeks? In the same order? <laughs> sure. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so Jewel has been snubbing the guild a bit. She did stop by or she sent a courier to pick up her money because um, you don't fuck with her money. And... <laughs> She's been kind of in a cool down period waiting for an actual apology from uh, Spurin. And she um, is looking for somebody to send as a courier or send messages or something just to keep a, a check in on uh, the, the town of Timitone since they did leave it with a bunch of hobgoblins still occupying their sawmill. Um Another thing I brought up during our total party gossip was um, I want to show up at the um, at the priory or wherever it is that Barnabas was, and I'll make a big deal out of showing up and be really glitzy and ask him out for lunch and have a talk to him about how not all of the ways of the guild are his ways. The way the path of vengeance isn't the path that he's on, so. Some people's ideas of good and evil and right and wrong are going to vary from him, his, and he should basically get back in line with his, get back on his path because, mm. you know, he's being bullied. So, um, are you saying I, Graham was bullying Barnabas? No, I'm, you know, he's being bullied by the people that, uh, that he works with at the priory or the, the oh, academy. Yeah. Um, at least that's what we heard. I also have, um, I have put out an order for a special magic magic item that I spoke with Jeremy about in private. So that's that's what how I spent my time. Justin, real real <laughs> quick, remind me what that was again. You can type it or text it. If you uh, want. yeah, it was just a sword. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. No problem on that. Okay. Uh, Sean, how would Barnabas reply to Jules' date lecture? <laughs> I'd have her roll a charisma check. No. Oh, it's super cocked. Hold on. Uh, that is a natural one plus seven. <laughs> so that is an eight. Uh, he would sit and listen to her and he would nod his head and and you know, try to put on a, a happy face. Um, but with Jules insight, I don't know what your insight is. It's terrible. Okay. My it's zero. All right, go ahead. So. Roll me an insight check then. I rolled a 19 on the inside. <laughs> I rolled a 19. Okay. Then, yeah. then you realize that even though you're trying to cheer him up and have that conversation with him, um, it's, it's not sinking in. It's like someone, you, you know, you're giving someone advice and, and they're like, uh-huh, that's a good idea. I'm going to definitely do that. But you can tell just by looking at him that, that it's just like going in one ear and out the other. Ah, fuck. He's, he's okay. got that tough forehead. I tried to do forehead. a good thing. <laughs> you tried. When you try your best and you don't succeed. Yeah, good good job. Right. You tried. Those are the things I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. I like it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, all righty. Justin, what did you do in two weeks? Oh, man. Uh, I am pretty sure that Stenel uh, spent some time 
like hanging out with Marin. Uh, I'm assuming Marin was going through that journal we found and, uh, you know, it was probably sequestered away somewhere quiet. And I'm sure that Stenel had many opportunities to bring food and drink and distractions and annoyances aplenty uh, to uh, that little study session, <clears throat> um, probably leading to many uh, micro conflicts. Uh, that being said, <laughs> he's probably also spent some time with his crossbow. Uh, mm. Not like seriously trying to learn how to use it, but just like using it under the assumption that it's going to work perfectly when he needs it to. But he just likes the way it <laughs> sounds when he fires it. Uh, so that's definitely something that's happened. Um, probably a fair amount of drinking and Maybe giving Jewel some space because Jewel seemed really annoyed by that guy. <laughs> I wasn't annoyed by my friends, though. Yeah, but you're just so angry. <laughs> I don't, if you if you convince Stenel that it's safe to be around you, he'll probably hang out some. Oh, totally. I don't really drink or have alcohol at my house, so um, it's not as fun hanging out at my house. But well, no, it's okay because whatever I bring over, I just pound it. Uh, on the porch, <laughs> I'm like, hang, hang on, hang on. You pregame, yeah. <laughs> and I down it, and then I stagger in. I don't know why you're friends right. with Stenel when he's such a <laughs> irresponsible person. Uh, so that's that's the that's the gist of it. Um, and Singer, what'd you do? Um, Two weeks. It's been, it's, it's been you, a little so. bit longer for me. Um, no, so I would have spent time in West Bank uh, exploring West Bank, um, and I accidentally ran across the Zalia Temple there, um, and finding out that uh, they were in need, uh, I spent a, a good portion of time helping them out, um, just taking care of the the small temple and, and maintaining it and maybe putting in some work on rebuilding some of the uh, dilapidated uh, pieces. Um, we made a pretty good haul on our last couple of uh, adventures. So I would probably donate um, um, half of my funds towards that to uh, rebuild the, this temple. But that's probably what kept me away from the last adventure the party went on. It's just, I was just very busy getting stuck in there. So, um, and outside of that, uh, once I hear about everything going on with Jewel, I would spend some time just making sure I, tr I try to cheer her up as, as best, uh, as best as I can and, um, bring a, a smile to her face. And, and I would also like to uh, spend some time shopping for teas at a city like this that probably has teas from all over the place. And, uh, maybe I can find a couple of unique, uh, strains that I haven't had before. Yeah. And as almost oh, definitely. No, sorry. Hmm? I was gonna say, as a resident who grew up here, I could probably direct you to some really good, like obscure tea shops, the hipster tea shops. Hipster tea shop. Right. Um. So I don't know if you remember, but right across the street from the guild is a curio shop that was kind of purposely designed so that people would break stuff in it and have to buy it. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do. Yeah. <laughs> But they have tons of teas. But if you're working with Jewel, you probably wouldn't go there. Right. I think I think I would probably <laughs> spend some time in that shop at first. And then after Jewel's like, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> then then I'd I'd hit up a couple of other shops and maybe find something from from a faraway place that I've never been to and just imagine what it's like as I'm sipping uh, a delicious tea. Also, do they they have like a, a traveling teapot, like maybe something made of iron I could attach to my backpack so I can make it when I'm when we're on the uh, the trail. Like the cleric from Princess Mononoke. <laughs> yeah. So I think one of you guys picked it up. Oh, I might be wrong, but there was a self-heating stone that was essentially like a single burner. Hmm. Um was it at the from, Wyvern? I think so. Adventure? Well, I didn't write any of that down I'm in my inventory. Pretty sure you guys picked one up somewhere. Mm. Could be wrong, listeners. If I'm wrong, tell me. But that's something you can find pretty easy. This is some magic items I had for you. You might not have them because you're stupid and don't look at stuff. <laughs> 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 well, it might be in something we're going to release on Patreon. But I'm pretty sure I remember writing that in somewhere. Okay. 
Okay, I'm not. So I'll buy that if it. if I can't. But I would also like to see a sturdier teapot as well. Oh yeah, yeah most definitely. That, that's awesome. I really I really dig that whole that whole concept. Mm-hmm. Um, magical solutions for modern problems. Heck yeah! <laughs> Lovely. Uh, all right. So it's two weeks. Um, Jewel, you're in your loft, uh, probably working on a new tune, and then you hear a knock knock. I like finish making my notations at uh, my piano or whatever I'm making my music on and go to the door, I guess, open it. And right outside is about a three foot tall black crow person, Kenku, in a like beige hooded robe. Uh, It doesn't look like it's the nicest thing, but uh, it's just enough to keep her her warm and covered. Uh, she has a, a messenger bag. And then in Milo's voice, you hear message message for Jewel. It it comes from, oh, because it's a Kenku. Is it a <laughs> yeah. known uh, message runner from the guild? Would I recognize her? Yeah. Yeah. Her name is Taryn. Okay. Hello, darling. Yeah. And then she says, darling, back at you in your own voice. <laughs> <laughs> and I laugh and I just I like stand aside and gesture if she, if she would like to come in. Would you like to come in? And she shakes her head. No. And then. Uh, she says. New quest, new quest. And Aiden in Aiden Lynn's voice, the human female that takes care of the quests. Oh, what is it? And then in Milo's voice, you hear Bantham Trip. Oh, Bantham. My face immediately just lights up. I haven't been to Bantham in a year, I, at least a year. And then she reaches in her bag and gets out this little, it's wrapped in wax paper with a bow. It's really small, fits in the palm of your hand, and she hands it to you. Okay. I it's just a little ball. Take it. And you said it was wrapped mm-hmm. in wax paper? Yeah, it's like a ball with a ribbon holding it up together. Okay, I will pull the, the thread of the ribbon to, you know, flourishly mm-hmm. untie it. <laughs> yeah, so it it just kind of unfurls itself, and it's full of those little cubic gummy fruit candies. Oh. And, I- and then in Spurn's voice, she just says, for you. Mm, my my mood dampens a little bit <laughs> like oh. okay and i offer her a candy and she just happily takes it um and then she says in milo's voice when are you coming uh i will wrap up what i'm doing and be there within an hour sounds good and she just kind of skips down the hall bye uh and then in a big gruff voice bye (laughs) (laughs) i love kenkus okay um steno where are you at uh what time of day is it uh early morning like nine ish uh i'm probably at breakfast probably surrounded by a little bit too much food definitely drinking some ale mm. uh okay yeah i don't know if there's anyone playing music <laughs> this early but um there's someone just kind of strumming it's not really anything but um i would say there's probably a dozen people downstairs besides the bartender all all mostly guildies and then there's one guy that has a couple of like like fans that follow him around everywhere i'm probably just chatting up a couple guildies um and then you see a changeling like skin pasty like elmer's glue and jet black orbs for eyes um come down the stairs from milo's office and he has the messenger bag and he goes to go out the door and then he like stops in those tracks and then 
in the most like monotone androgynous voice you hear Stunnel. uh is our changelings common enough that Stunnel would have seen one before now uh in west bank definitely and this is one of the other pages for the guild their name is aix aex that's a cool name <clears throat> uh i wave them over i just i gesture with like a yeah a flagon or a fork mm. uh aix has a shoulder length white hair that's cut to like droop over their eyes um the back's kind of done in a ponytail but there's like bangs over the front to kind of hide their face um and they're dressed in like a long coat that's a little bit too big for them um i was just sent out to find you um, but it looks like you're here um, milo wants to talk to you and singer and jewel oh well, why didn't you say so you want some uh you want some potatoes? They got some fried potatoes here. But I just said so. No thank you. I already ate. You sure? Oh, all right. More for me. Okay. Hey, thanks. And he holds out his hand. Or they hold out their hand. I'll put a potato in it. <laughs> oh. For the road. For the road. I know <laughs> and you just like they they just tilt their hand so it hits the floor and then he goes back behind the bar. Oh, that's like sheepishly. That's good potato, man. All right. Well, I'll I'll, I'll get you later. <laughs> mm. and, it, and they just go, yeah. Uh what <laughs> a gem! Total hit at parties. <laughs> uh singer, where are you at? Oh, sorry, Stenel. Did you? Have I was just say? gonna go. Uh, yeah, like finish off my food and drink and then maybe go find uh mr milo man okay okay so uh singer where you at? Uh, what day is it it is friday oh um if it's a friday then i would just be finishing up um my ablutions at the temple and making my way towards the guild Okay, the equivalent to Friday, I should say, because we named our days and now I can't remember what yeah, they were. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> um, okay, so you're walking through West Bank, and uh, West Bank, just through most of the streets and alleyways, there's like covered vendors, uh, like like the cloth covering uh, for the stalls. Pretty much everywhere throughout all the alleyways, people peddling whatever they can. There's inns, restaurants all throughout with uh, housing spattered in between and above. Um, most of the streets are pretty packed. Um, as you get closer to the guild, it becomes more heavily uh, populated and dense. It becomes harder to move through. Um, would you say your temple's probably down by the water? Uh, yeah, the, the temple would have been down by the water. And even though I've been here now for a little while, all of these crowds packing me in uh, is still unnerving. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, so you're sifting your way through with a, a slight bit of agoraphobia. <laughs> and skipping along comes uh, Joe Bigheart. One of the other pages for the guild. She's short, younger. She has brown hair with freckles. And she is literally skipping uh, with an apple tart in her hand. I, uh, I, I nod at her as I see her and recognize her. Gentle rains. And she goes, oh, just who I was looking for. Oh, me? I, I was sure your temple was somewhere down here, but I've been circling and circling and circling and circling and circling and circling and circling, and, circling and I just couldn't find it. So what a coincidence. Mm, yeah, yes, uh, quite, quite a coincidence. Uh, very, very good. And she says, Milo wants to see you. Oh, um, uh, fanta- I was on my way there. Oh, great. I'll race you. <laughs> um... Uh, how about, um, how about you just, uh, just, um, hold my hand and, and we can walk back to the guild. Mm, but my hand's full of tart. 
Oh, yes, I see that. Mm, how about I just hold on to the back of your shirt then and you just go? <laughs> <laughs> Are you using her to clear the crowd? Uh, yeah, more of just a, a, a friendly a person to help me through. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> It's like walking through Pike Place. You have to like have one person push and make a train. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Except you're relying on a just under three foot. Oh, happen. this is going to go great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And she says, fine, I guess. Do you want a bite? Um, sure. I, I love whatever <laughs> that is in your hand. It looks tartish. <laughs> and she just hands it to you and then uh, like lifts her hood up for you to grab and then just starts going. Okay. Uh, take a bite, grab her hood and we go. Yeah. And she actually moves pretty quick through the crowd. Um, she goes through a couple back alleys to avoid some congestion, but uh, gets to the guild pretty quick. Fantastic. Um, and you and Jewel arrive at roughly the same time, coincidentally. Hello. Ah, um, hi, Jewel. Just uh, gentle rains. Gentle rains. Just in time to see a very apathetic changeling drop a potato in front of Stenel. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think that's all about? No, that, that didn't look pleasant. I wonder if Stenel said something. Probably. Hmm. Gentle rains, Stenel. Uh, hang on, hang on. I'm I'm busy like picking the grit off this potato. It's still good. <laughs> it's the. I also give like a little wave. It's the it's the five minute rule. Hey, <laughs> uh, up in the mountains, we it's we didn't the, really. It's not rotten rule. Yeah, we didn't really have a rule if if it fell on the ground or not. We we'd still eat it. Mm, that's good enough. I don't like to waste. Hey uh, guys, uh, it's been a bit. Yeah. At least since yesterday. Yeah, it sounds like there's a there's a new job for us though. Hopefully paid. Uh, Milo's the one with all the cool paintings, right? Let's go say hi. Yeah. You hear from the corner, Stenel, are you eating floor potatoes again? <laughs> what no? Who's asking? It's a big half work. <laughs> oh, who's who's at? Who's asking? It's Brutus. I... <laughs> Brutus, a male half-orc barbarian. Hey, Brutus. How are things? Uh, it would be better if you quit eating floor potatoes. No, it wouldn't. It would be <laughs> worse. You don't want to see me when I'm Jewel, hungry. What you... Stenel, did, did you just Jewel, change your what... voice? No, the, this is <laughs> how I always sound. Singer, <laughs> did you change your voice? Uh, not that I recall. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I... No, I'm... Okay. Hmm. Pretty sure mid-sentence he changed his voice. Stenel's kind of like got the chest puff a little bit. Squaring the shoulders up. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, Brutus. You You, you keep lifting, okay? And he says, stay swole. <laughs> <laughs> Till the next swoller eclipse. <laughs> then I'll, and he flexes yeah, at you. <laughs> I'll, I'll flex and then I'll do like the chest bump or whatever. Against his, I don't know, thigh. <laughs> <laughs> you waddle over like a penguin with your chest puffed out. <laughs> uh, Rrr, you know. Mm-hmm. And he totally leans down to do it, too. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh. um, all right. So are you guys heading up to Milo's yes. office? Yeah. yeah. All right. So you head up the stairs and walk down the walkway, and it's right before Spurrin's office. <laughs> um, and the door's cracked open. Knock, knock. Hey, yo. And he goes, if it... Is it my favorite beautiful people? Ah, come on in. Enter and barge in. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I politely close the door. And he's working. <laughs> okay. Uh, and he goes, "Oh, thank you." It was getting noisy out there. 
but he's working on this massive like 10 foot by six foot uh 10 foot long by six foot tall uh mural and he's got a couple step stools set up and it's facing the door um and there's just paint everywhere all over the rug and walls on his desk um all over his face all over his clothes but it's this beautiful like magma cavern system Mm. um with like these weird red glowing flowers coming out of the ceiling Hmm. whoa that's really cool it's beautiful can i examine it up close and he says sure don't touch it i was it's still a little wet here and here but i was i kind of do that like slightly fish out of water like it's obviously a super mess in here and there's paint everywhere before like, like kind of looking at the chair and press digitating it. So there's not paint on it before I sit down. <laughs> nice. I'm uh yeah, I, I was a he, quarter of an inch from touching the canvas when he said that. So I'm. And he just kind of, he bats your finger away with his wet paintbrush. Yeah. <laughs> well, and he says, sorry for the mess, Jewel. It's to be expected with us creative types, I suppose. Uh, gentle rain, he sir. Says, um, uh, uh, you wanted to see us? Oh, yes. Sorry, I was just so in the zone. Uh, Dora uh, stopped by and and told me where she'd been, and I just got inspired. Um, and he just drops his palette and paintbrush just on the ground, and the paint kind of sp- like spatters all over the wood floor. And then he hops down off his stepladder and sits in his chair. Um, I, I guess I should just get to business. Uh, so thank you for taking the time to meet with me today. Spurn says I should start saying that for morale or something. <laughs> yes, he's the, the epitome of inspiring morale in his troops. Uh, yeah, he does very well with morale and mostly paperwork, but morale too. Yeah, he's about as encouraging as a wet blanket. Shh, he's right next door. He knows how I feel. <laughs> how can we help you, Milo? <laughs> um, so you know those weird kobolds you guys found when you went through your your entrance test many mo- moons ago? Of course, how could we forget? Yeah, well, we sent some teams down there to kind of see what was going on. And uh, that looks like it's an ent- entrance to the labyrinth. Um, and those tubes, they go up through the mountains. And it looks like they go all the way up through the, the elven lands, all the way in Yefa Alari. Where's my map? Yeah, Yefa Alari. Under Amalim. Maybe even all the way over to Angkor on the other side of the mountain. Hmm. Um, they're working on mapping it, but they're just twisting and turning and they drop and they're having a really hard time in there. Um, but we have confirmed that there are mind flares down there. We've seen more of those brain dogs, uh, intellect devourers. Um, so I would like it if you three took a trip over to Bantham. Bantham. I love Bantham. I don't get it. Why it, Bantham? It's a town. Yeah, I'm a little confused as well. Um, It's here, but you want us to go all the way over there. I, what for? Well, it just so happens that there's a business in Bantham called Lumita. Yeah. And it specializes in this sort of thing. Um... So if you'd be so kind as to mosey on over there and inquire uh, and see what they could give us to help us deal with this problem, we'd pay you for the trouble and you could take a tour with our sister guild. Are you looking for something that's going to help keep brain dogs away? Or are you looking for something that's going to help with all the the maps, the making making maps? He says, well, frankly, both. Oh, well, Bantham really does have everything. Um, it, <laughs> um, if you tell the guys at Lumitech that the guild is dealing with mind flares, uh, they'll, they'll be able to send somebody over here to help us. 
Oh, um, that that sounds good. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, sir, but the the distance between us and them is quite extensive. Uh, how long were we supposed to be gone? Don't you know the portal? Oh yes, sure, the portals. Mm-hmm. Uh, no. <laughs> Jewel, you, you've been through them, right? Yeah, absolutely. I take it the guild um, will be paying our fare, or? Uh, and he opens a desk drawer, and he takes out, it's uh, it's like a hexagonal cylinder, about uh, 10 inches long, of like this lavender translucent crystal. Hmm. Um, and he says, well, if you take the, the northeast road up to the base of the mountain, um, there's a gate there, and if you put this crystal in it, it'll take you just outside of Bantham. All right, sounds ah. good to me. So we're paying this. Uh, we're we're paying for this crystal. Uh, the guild there should give you one to to come back. So please check in with the sister guild. And let me know how how they're doing. Um, do some sightseeing. Um, take it all in. I I know Singer and Stenel could really use it. Yeah, I I don't know that Singer will necessarily love it, but it's definitely <laughs> something you should experience. Mm, yes, I was. When was the last time thinking? Sorry, go ahead. Something similar. Um, big cities. Uh, hooray! <laughs> when was the last time Jewel was in Bantham? Oh, probably. Uh, a year and a half ago. Okay. So you don't know yet. Okay. Um, Milo says, I think Singer will like it more than, than you're expecting. Okay. Yeah, certainly more than what I'm expecting. <laughs> yeah, come on. It'll be fun. And would I know where the, the guild hall is in Bantham? Definitely. Um, it is. Let me find it. Whenever I'm traveling with you, Stenel, it's always it fun. Is. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty close to Glowfly Station, uh, which is in a sprawling market district. Okay. It's like Chinatown slums where the buildings are built up three, four, five stories, and every level is a different restaurant or business. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Right, I right. could do a little shopping. Yeah. Um, so you'll do it, he says. Of course. Are you getting excited? Um, just real, real quick. Uh, how much is the job worth? And he goes, oh, well... Uh, I'll give you a hundred gold now each, and uh, I'll give you a bonus when you come back, depending on what you do over there. Oh, all right. I mean, for a couple of days travel, sure, that sounds fine. Think of it as a paid vacation. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, come on, singer, it'll be great. You're gonna have such a great time, and big cities are the best. Stenel, have you ever been? to this place that we're going to? Yeah. Yeah. Of course I have. Um, Out of curiosity, uh, Senna, was this when you were raiding it as a pirate or before that? <laughs> what? We never sailed that far. So before it. Okay, good. No, that's... I was just checking. Uh, I was just checking, you know. Yeah. Well then, uh, I'll have Meriwether put together a cart for you to head up to the gate because it can be a pain to walk um, and you should be in Bantham before nightfall. Sounds great. Excellent. Well, anything else for me? No. No, but keep keep painting. This one's a keeper. Yeah. And he says... They're all keepers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just like you. And he like makes a boop your nose motion. <laughs> Stenel kind of grins. 
Well then, Gildies, why don't you get what you need and and then head on out? And gentle rains. And he casts a little he casts a little spell and he says, Merryweather, take a cart with two horses out front. Okay. Um, has says, my magic item shown up yet? Oh yeah, you definitely have it already. Oh, okay. You have you have a bag of holding too, right? Do I? We have a bag of holding. I don't know if it's so someone has it. Yeah, I probably have it. And a drift globe. Those are handy. Because Singer also has a drift globe, right? Sure. Uh, I thought <laughs> I thought one of us had a I thought somebody already had one and then we found one. Um no, I have a pole of collapsing and decanter of endless water. And then we found a drift globe oh. and a okay. uh, bag of holding. And a right. gem. Okay. Which is very cool. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so once we leave the office, I'll reach into my bag of holding and pull out a um a long object that is like wrapped in some very fine cloth and I'll hand it to uh Stenel. I oh. got this for you. What what's this? Uh, what for me? Yeah. Huh. Uh well, I thank you. I I didn't I didn't think to get you something. Did I miss an event? No, is it's it, not required. Is, is, no. It's not a holiday. Okay. I'll no, I'll no. unwrap it. All right. It is a replacement moon moon glow sword. <gasps> Moon touch. Moon touch sword. Wait, really? Yeah. So it's still a long sword, but now it's magic again, and it's like the 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 one that glows in the in the dark, and it does the, like magic stuff. Yeah. Ah, tackle hug. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> you have been. I like pat your head. <laughs> tackle hug by a badger, and I like the the mm-hmm. the, the the squeeze part of the hug is pretty strong, like. Yeah, yeah, like you're choking me out a little bit around the middle. <laughs> <laughs> just um, just in a stomach region, yeah. You hear kind of a rattling from upstairs, and then against the banister, Milo appears, and he, he put a step stool so he can kind of get over the top of it. Um, and he goes, before they leave, and while they're having this lovely moment, um, mm-hmm. I need to announce that Singer... Stenel and Jewel have all been promoted to gold rank. And everybody Ooh. like freezes in the bar for a second. And then erupts and cheering and clapping. And um, you just hear congratulations. And uh, Brutus is going over to grab some drinks for you guys. Kind of uh. Do a little bit of a. Like not actually bowing, but like twirling my hand like I like you would do like a stupid you know what i'm talking about like the bow but you're not actually bowing you're just motioning with your hand yeah you're just kind of rolling it out away from yourself yeah yes you, you the you <laughs> yeah yeah um so they have risen in ranks frighteningly quick um they have helped multiple communities uh here with the local paladins the local temples uh and they've helped a few cities up north uh, slain bandits, uh, drove off hobgoblins and druids, and really just been a, a solid pillar. And we think it's time to promote them to gold rank. So one more cheer. And then Brutus, can you give these to them, please? I have painting to do. And he drops down a little bag on the bar. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, yay. And then does like the little like golf clap and then goes back inside and shuts the door. <laughs> Ah, uh, uh, wow, come on, gold guys. already. Yeah, <laughs> this, um, that seemed fast to everyone else. I I thought this took a bit of time. Um, we we must be really good at what we do. Maybe some people just join the guild and sit on the the you know the mantle, the power of having guild ranking, but don't really go do anything. Maybe that's why our last mission was left to sit so long that it. It uh, got more complex than 
you know, instead of just being a sawmill, it was the whole town. So maybe, uh, maybe it's just a lot of people sitting here for the privilege of being in the guild. Wow, that's, that's kind of kind of dark there, Jewel. I just thought we were really good. <laughs> and- maybe it's that. Yes, maybe maybe it's that. You know, Jewel, you're so salty, you could be a pirate yourself. <laughs> no. But, uh, I mean, I kind of see where you're getting with that. <laughs> so, well, I'm... I'd like to think we're just also the best, but... Brutus had uh, four mugs of ale, and then he, like, he frantically puts them down on back onto the bar and grabs the bag, and waddles over jo- jollily is that a word happily um jaunty merrily yeah and he opens the bag and there's uh three new pins for your cloak Ooh. with uh Pull like a golden Sammy. mimic design oh lovely these are gorgeous do we just give the old ones back or do we just add this one yeah uh, he says you give the old ones back Okay, I'll unpin mine and drop it in the bag and put the new gold one on. Reduce, reuse, recycle. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Nothing goes to waste, right? Waste not, want not. Yeah, I'll 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 hand my silver one back. Get the gold one on there. Oh, flashy! Gold badger, amazing. You look amazing, singer. Oh, thanks. You you guys didn't get your still. Hmm? No, they never gave us the Electrum ones. We just had the silver ones. We were Electrum? You guys are too busy. I guess you guys left yeah. before they did your ceremony. Huh. That is true. Um, does this count as the ceremony? Just the cheering and the, the ale? Uh, I'm, I'm fine with that. I was just curious. And he says, what, that's not good enough for you? And gives you a pat on the shoulder. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, no. It's, it's very similar to Zalia's worship. Uh, have you seen the temple? Perhaps you could swing by sometime and... And he goes, uh, 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 I think I'm needed in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, uh, Brutus, don't don't take it personally. Uh, Singer's never happy. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. I think I need to go help cook that stew. <laughs> uh, Always be preaching. It's it's strange. Uh, that happens a lot with people. I don't, huh. It's okay, Singer. You'll get them next time. <laughs> I will. Um, have you been to this the temple? Yeah, a couple times. You you invited me to some of your uh, ceremonies, and I just I chewed really loudly, and I cheered for him really loudly. Oh, right, remember? I remember that. Yes, yes, in the in the back row there, that was it was loud enough to as if you were in the front row. And then no. you asked me to leave. Yeah, yeah, I only did that that one time. <laughs> I will discreetly push my uh, flagon of ale towards sing or er, towards uh, Stenel. Mm-hmm. Because I do not want it. And I I will oblige. I was halfway reaching for it because I know you don't like this stuff. <laughs> I politely took two sips and then put it back on the counter. And I'll I'll mm. start nursing uh, singers as well. <laughs> okay. So you're <laughs> just, just waddling three. around the three. Three flagons in. <laughs> okay. um, it's not too long before Poe pokes her head in. Uh, she's a female dragonborn with copper scales. Um. She's kind of, she's medium height, but she's kind of slender. Um, and she says, Jewel, singer, S- Stenel, uh, your, your ride's ready. Let's go. Oh, we are yeah. traveling. Here we go. Style. Let's go. And she says, you're, you're ready, right? Mm-hmm. I yeah. uh, have learned to always walk around with my traveling gear on. That sounds uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. At least when the the guild calls, I definitely, you know, grabbed my stuff, made sure there weren't any perishables in my my house. <laughs> um, yeah. When you head out, uh, Merryweather, a giant furbolg with big floppy ears, is double checking all the the harnesses on the cart. Um, Here we are. Hello. He he gently says, "Oh, just." Just go ahead and sit in back. Poe will be taking you out there. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And I nod my head and get in the, the cart. And then you gently says again, have a good ride. 
Uh, big old heroes coming through. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Poe stoically sits in front and she kind of leans back and just says, congratulations. And then, yeah. Thanks, Poe. <laughs> <laughs> can All I right. can I give Poe a quick hug? I'm feeling huggy. Uh, she begrudgingly lets you. Just like, yeah, just the shoulders. Just, ah, and then yeah. I'll get back in my seat. Uh, Stenel, um, just, just to let you know, n- not everyone is as huggy as, as you are. I'm already um, hugging you. Singer. No, no, no. no, no yeah. and, and, and I pat you on the head. Yeah, I, that's, I'm just warning you that some people aren't, aren't so, so that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I pull Have up the Have you ever considered that you might drink too much? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> What? Sorry, I'm admiring the the moonlight sword. I'm just kind of like <laughs> moving it around. I'll pull out my little orb of candies and offer everybody a candy. Oh, I will definitely take that. Oh shit! Aww. I'll try one. <laughs> so, have you had those candies? Oh, I can't remember what they're called, but they come in a sheet essentially, and they cut them into cubes, and normally, like grandmas get them. Like the candy dot things? I'm trying to look it up. Are they taffy? No, it's like... Are they high chews? No, it's like old lady candy. Werther's? Well, I know a lot of old lady candy, so... Caramels! I, I'm i an old lady. I eat all candy, so it's how like, dare you? It normally has little fruit chunks in it with like a little bit of oh, sugar. Oh, like the, uh, the apl- applets and cutlets or whatever? I think so. Uh, you I know s- what I'm talking about. We had some at one of your uh, at one of the events over at Sean's house. Yeah, I I, I love applets and cutlets. I I spit yep, mine out. That's it. That's it. Oh, oh, okay. So right out the window. <laughs> Stettle, <laughs> what? Oh. You spent time <laughs> to pick up that potato with it. You spit that outside. <laughs> it's candy. Just was a weird texture. <laughs> um. Like eating Fruit slime. Delights, applets and cutlets. Uh, anyway. So Poe drives you down through the market district and out one of the main gates. You travel through some farmland at a, at a brisk pace. You see other merchants and peddlers coming in, farmers with animals uh, and carts full of hay or fruits. Um, eventually you get to the edge of the woods and you can see the mountains in the distance. Um, the road is very, very well traveled and well kept. There's guards posted all throughout. Um, you get into the woods, the sun peeks through it's, it's a partly cloudy day, but it's nice. Um, you hear birds chirping in the distance, uh, and overall it just feels like a good day. You got a promotion, you get a vacation, you're being escorted to a nice far away land. Um, and towards sunset, you get to the gate. And it's essentially a stargate. Um, hmm. It's a big circular portal that has a pedestal in front and to the left of it um, where different types of crystals will fit. They all have different shapes. Um, and it's inactive, but uh, not too too long before you got to it there was a cart coming from that direction and it it was one of those very nice kind of gypsy wagons with drapery hanging all off it and it's well painted and um you pull up to it and poe says this is your stop so okay would Jewel would know if this is like, should we be tipping everybody from the guild since this is kind of like their job or are we like America where you have to fucking tip everybody for doing everything? So Aix is a special case that just tried to get a little more money. Get a tip? Yeah. Okay. Um, But everyone else is paid through the guild. Okay. This is essentially her nine to five. Okay. Well... I, Thank I you for the ride. Was under the impression that you drove through this thing. Is that not so? And no, she says, walk through. I can, but I'm not going to. 
<laughs> oh, uh, well, no, that that's fine. I was just, I, I never knew. Mm -hmm. uh, gentle rains. And yeah, I there's get just out of the like, cart. There's just like a stone ramp built up to it. And the thing is massive enough for two carts to go through side by side. Mm. Um, you could probably fit an elephant through it if you really tried. Mm. Yeah, okay. uh, gentle rains. And she just nods. Thank you, Poe. And when you got all your stuff, she double checks and then takes off. I must admit, uh, a little bit, Jewel, this um, is a little uh, nerve-wracking. I've never been through one of these. Uh, what, what's it feel like? Uh, is there a sensation? Um, is it painful? Um, uh, Stenel's listening intently. I Jewel knows, but Vanessa doesn't. Um, I'm going to say everyone feels a little different when they go through it. Most people will feel tingly. A lot of people feel like a little stretchy, um, but it's pretty <laughs> instant and fleeting before you're just in the new climate. And that's what's really shocking. So I'll, I will say that and then I'll add on. It's been a long time since I've been through a portal sober. <laughs> <laughs> yeah me me too are you sober you just had three flagons of beer well uh, i guess it's been a while yeah no i'm i'm fine and i pound the chest um out of curiosity is is there like a failure rate like people who step through and, and never arrive is that, is that a thing no i don't think so mm -mm, no you don't think they so definitely don't advertise it if it is <laughs> but doesn't that make you think that 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 could then happen if they don't advertise it i've never had a problem i've been through portals dozens of times well jewel Probably i imagine if you had had a problem i wouldn't be talking to you or would you now I'll just now i'm just up. confused <laughs> 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 i'll pull out the um the hexagonal cylinder crystal yeah and when you go up to the pedestal there are spots for all different shapes there's a triangle there's just like a rectangle one uh a, a long cube a square um and yours fits right in hmm. see what Get all ready. my toys are based off of <laughs> <laughs> so i'll start sliding it in and Prepare. Do you mean this yes. then? And I pull it out and shake it at you. <laughs> what is that? What is that? Oh, uh, never mind. And I put it back. <laughs> what was that? What are you hiding in there? It's that thing that we found in that village that one time. Oh. An idol of some kind. You still have that? Well, of course. It's an adventurer's token. <laughs> There's so many better adventurer's tokens than a dildo. Well, I don't collect like ears or anything like that. Round peg in the round mm. hole. Yeah. Sure, you'll okay. figure it out. So Jewel slides the hexagonal crystal into the pedestal. And the space between the, the portal kind of shimmers. And you can faintly see through the shimmer a snowy mountainous forest. Hmm. That looks right. It's going to be cold. Did we pack things for cold? Mm. Sure, I have like a coat in my bag or something. Well, let's let's just hope that they have a a, a carriage of some kind near nearby that we can take. Uh, yeah. Jewel, Singer. you know it's not too far of a walk from the portal. Do you do you need my <laughs> my cloak? Oh no, I actually don't mind the cold, but um, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, me neither. All right. Okay. All right. We're we're gonna. We're How gonna long do does this. this thing stay open? About ten minutes on average. Oh, so anybody could just piggyback off of your hard work in earning a key. Mm -hmm. Well, no time like the present. Uh, uh, I'll offer my hand out to Singer. I take it. <laughs> Sensing he's a little uncomfortable, and I'll. When you get close, through. you can just barely feel a cold breeze. Hmm. And when uh, you pull through, 
Uh, Jewel, you get the kind of drunk tingles that you haven't felt yeah. in a while. Yeah. Um, and Stenel and Stinger, Singer, you feel like like Stretch Armstrong, like you're just like popping your joints and like stretching out all the hard to get places, and then poof, you're there. You just take a step into about ten inches of snow. Yeah. Oh. Oh, you actually, that tickle. wasn't that wasn't too bad. I there's this part in the very lower back I haven't quite gotten to in ages. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> in terms of stretch, he's talking about stretching. <laughs> stretch does stretch does stretch. Oh, popped all the joints. You take Neck a look around. Looser. The <laughs> portal behind you is still open and you see the kind of temperate forest where you're at uh, behind the shimmer faintly um, you're in kind of a thicket of woods and over the tops of the trees behind the portal you see these giant snow capped mountains um, and ahead of you you can see just the tops of buildings over the trees uh, the terrain besides just the thicket of trees that you're kind of encompassed by is rocky with thick shrubs the trees are tall and skinny and hardy um but really dense and close together um there's lots of like big boulders scattered about and the grass is coarse and long and tall i'm gonna take a a really deep breath is um the altitude higher up here yes yeah it's just thinner cold mountain air what Mm. you're used to this reminds me of home. Doesn't um, look like the pathway is being like maintained by any anybody or anything. Oh, definitely. There, there is a clear road ahead of you, um, okay. that kind of twist through the thicket and then out into the view. Do you follow the road? Yeah. All right. I Stenel's kind of green around the face area (laughs) so you come through the thicket and you see a road that kind of goes down into a valley between some peaks and then back up towards the city there is a crossroad that goes left off into the mountains and you see a group of eight people on these weird mounts uh, that you haven't seen before just kind of sitting there surveying something they have on the ground down the road, you see three peaks of increasing sizes. Uh, the lowest peak has two towers at the top, and they look like they're pretty steep little mountains. Uh, the medium peak between the, uh, the higher and lower is just fully dense of houses and businesses and small keeps and towers, and uh, the largest keep looks like this mega castle. Um, between the smallest and medium peak there is this big brightly lit up pit that is uh glowing this fluorescent like sky blue um and there's a bunch of those lights just kind of spattered about like shibuya tokyo and then there are these big floating they almost look close to the portals but mid-air between the peaks and going down to that kind of pit um where jewel you know it's the raceway but Mm. there's a floating train that goes through these big uh, gateways floating in the sky and stops at each peak and then loops back down to the raceway um the whole thing is encompassed by this 20 foot high solid stone wall and the road goes right down to the main gate. Um, as you're surveying this new site, you see a bright flash over the bay on the other side of the city. A lightning storm rages. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of lightning strikes coming from the cloudy skies hitting the sea. Not too far off the coast. Whoa. The thunder cracks over and over and over and over again. This is something new. 
No. Uh, that's different. It's probably just a spat. You, you mean it's not always like this? No, I mean, storms come and go, right? Yeah, but this one means business. The yeah. climate, it's its not really raining. It's a little tiny drizzly, but it's mostly just dry, windy, cold. The wind's coming from down over the mountaintops, and it's kind of chilling. But it doesn't seem like this is the type of climate. I mean, Singer would know this right off the bat, that this kind of thunderstorm should be going on. Yep, no, for sure. This is definitely Salia, and she's pretty upset. <laughs> Yeah, um, if you're the god of, if you're the god of storms and lightning, are you only displaying lightning when you're upset, or are you upset all the time? Uh, well, you know, it depends on your interpretations of her uh, speaking. She could just be having a very long lecture with the sea. Um, they date, you know, the the god of the ocean mm-hmm. and and Zalia. Sea. It is the sea. Looks more like an argument. Could be an argument. Mm-hmm. Could just be that she's being very um, boisterous, ostentatious, um, just making sure that she's heard. Gesundheit. She's doing a domestic violence on the sea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I I wouldn't say so much uh, like that, especially since she's close enough that she can probably hear you. So no, nope, just a just a conversation. <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe you can put in a word, singer, uh, like, (laughs) tell her to chill a little bit. No, the ocean probably deserved it. Uh (laughs) Damn, son. (laughs) Oh, buddy. Someone's picking sides. Shall we? So as our heroes head down to this new neon lit city, arguing about the god of the, uh, the sea and the sky, uh, having some relationship spats. Um, We zoom out to see the mountain range and the city as a beacon uh, between the cold and the snow. What will our heroes find in Bantham? What adventures await? We'll find out next time on Total Party Guild. (gasps) And always... Party Party on! Party on! Remember to send us your memes and dice picks on Twitter and Instagram at Total Party Guild or hashtag Topagu and join our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Total Party Guild. We have a modest website, totalpartyguild.com, where we are setting up a wiki, our blog and info on the cast, interviews with the characters, and details about the continent of Arosa. Be sure to rate and review us on your podcast platform of choice. It's especially important to get us seen and promoted. If you love it, others might too. A guild of many defeats more monsters. Party on!